And so my parting message is big things are happening right now in the monetary system. It's going to cause instability in everything, including in precious metals, and you have to be ready and able to buy the dip. Let's begin with a little bit of a trivia question. The dollar is at 107 on the dollar index. The last time the dollar was at this level on the Forex markets was in October of 2002. And where was silver back then? Was it anywhere near where it is now, around $20? No, it was at $4.50. Since then, the dollar has gone pretty much nowhere except its purchasing power has been destroyed. Price inflation has been rampant. And silver is about five times what it was back then. Is that comforting considering what's going on in the precious metals markets at this point? Perhaps not, but it is still the reality. The dollar continually deteriorates and precious metals do not. And so with that thought, let's get into what is going on now. Despair is in the air is the reality of these kinds of markets. Embrace it because this is what bottoms are made of. And so let's begin with something that is happening in the SLV ETF that has only happened three times before, twice during financial crises and once post silver squeeze one. On Thursday, there was a 12.56 million ounce drain from the SLV ETF. That is the largest daily outflow of silver in SLV since post silver squeeze. The only other times that it happened was post the 2011 high at 50 when there was a huge sell off right after that top. And also during the 2008, during the peak of the 2008 financial crisis, these circles here, this is in the 2008 crisis, this is in the post 2011 high. And here is silver squeeze after the humongous record inflows into SLV the day before. And so we don't normally see these types of outflows in SLV unless we are either in a financial crisis or post a humongous physical silver squeeze. And which one are we probably in now? I would say it's the former. I don't know exactly what stage of it we're in, but from the repo markets and from what is going on in the plumbing, it is clear to me we're on the precipice or inside the next financial crisis already and it is being reflected in silver and gold and commodities generally. You see here on the bottom of this chart, I drew this black line. This is exactly at the 12.56 million ounce mark. These are daily outflows. And you see here, the line is only crossed three times during these circles. And now something pretty monumental is also happening in the gold market. You see here, you have clear capitulation of the longs in gold futures to huge down days as what could be called a bloodbath phase is ensuing and there is no recovery yet. So I do not think this is the bottom exactly, but I don't think we're going to get below the triple bottom of 1677 that was reached earlier in 2021. So what exactly is happening here? We're seeing a huge capitulation and still during those days, the same trading days from July 1st to July 5th, that is the first huge bar here, huge down bar here, we saw a, an increase in open interest of 3,546 contracts, which means the shorts are not covering and they are not able to because there are so many buyers at these levels that they are snapping up the offers and the shorts have no alternative but to sell more contracts short at these phenomenally low levels. The same thing happened yesterday on Wednesday, which would be two days ago if you're watching this now. We closed at an open interest of 503,238. That is a change of 5,000, an increase of 5,000 contracts, even though there's a massive sell-off in gold, which means that the buyers are taking these orders very quickly and this leads to firm bottoms in the past. Generally, when the spot price of the paper markets goes down, that's when the banks cover their shorts because there aren't many buyers, there are just sellers, and that allows the shorts to close their positions, buy their contracts back, and open interest shrinks. 
That is not happening this time. Only three times since 2008 have physical premiums been so high. The first was during the 2008 crisis. And this is the same chart that I show of standard junk premiums, meaning constitutional silver, junk silver from pre-1964. One is during the 2008 financial crisis when premiums hit around 40%. That record has not been broken yet. And you have here the bear market bottom of 2015, 2016, when premiums hit just under 30%. And here also during the 2020 financial crisis. Now we've had a steady and strong increase in premiums since Silver Squeeze 2021, when premiums went from about 3% to now around 27% and they are climbing still. Demand for physical silver keeps rising as the spot price falls. Next, we have another inversion in the yield curve. We saw it back in April, but it quickly shot back up to around 0.4. This is the difference between 10 year rates and two year rates. In the long-term chart of this, you would see that it goes below zero right before a financial crisis. And it did go below zero right here in September, 2019. What financial crisis was that? You might remember it known as the repocalypse when interest rates went overnight to 10% and the banks couldn't do anything until the Fed started expanding its balance sheet again. Now, the Fed recently stopped expanding its balance sheet. It is now about static close to $9 trillion and hasn't expanded in, I think, two or three months. And already we are below zero on the yield curve. This is going to cause some problems in the plumbing, in the repo markets, in the dungeons of the monetary creation system. You don't know exactly how it's going to manifest, but there are already problems manifesting. Basically the point is there are rumblings everywhere now Gold and silver are being affected. All commodities are being affected. Something huge is just around the corner, exactly what it is. Nobody knows, probably not even the Fed, but it will be big and it will require money printing, which will probably kill the dollar this round. And finally, a little comedy for you. This came out on Bloomberg and the title to the article was Nothing on horizon to rival dollar's status, Fed study finds. Two quotes from it that I want to read. The dollar's prime international status remains unchallenged, according to a study by Federal Reserve Bank of New York staff, despite challenges from sources including geopolitics and technologies like digital currencies. No currency replicates the characteristics of the U.S. dollar as a store of value, unit of account, and medium of exchange, the authors wrote. Moreover, U.S. assets are viewed to be safe and liquid with, and have withstood the effects of global shocks. Except that the Fed does not consider gold or silver to be currencies. They consider them to be commodities. And so they did not check their facts against those two currencies, only against other currencies that are actually based on the dollar itself. So well, the Fed has been looking in the wrong direction, thinking that cryptocurrencies are the threat to the dollar, they are not. Why is that? I, well, I struggle to understand why central banks or anyone else thinks that central bank digital currencies are anything fundamentally different from the system that we have now. Because imagine that the whole world moved to central bank digital currencies tomorrow. How would they be valued? How would you know how many central bank digital dollars or crypto dollars or whatever you wanna call them how many you needed to spend on a cup of coffee? How many you needed to buy a car? How many of these things would you need to buy a house? How would you know the answers to these questions? The answer is it would be indexed to the prices of dollars, which means the central bank digital currency would be based on the currency now, and that would be expanding the pyramid even farther. The problem is when the pyramid collapses, you have to go back to something else. You can't go back to dollars once the dollar has collapsed. You have to go back to something in the past which is gold and prior to that, silver. So central bank digital currencies are no different from the dollar itself, only in the way that those dollars are transmitted, which would be through a blockchain instead of through a banking system, a traditional banking system, but it's all qualitatively the same exact thing. Once this pyramid goes, you gotta go back to the base of the entire pyramid, which is silver. Because before even gold, that's what the dollar was based on. So once the dollar collapses, you got to go back to what it was based on or else prices make no sense and the division of labor breaks down.
And so my parting message is big things are happening right now in the monetary system. It's going to cause instability in everything, including in precious metals, and you have to be ready and able to buy the dip.